Question of the day, what's a genre that you would like to see receive the quick game treatment? I mean, after all, we've got Caverna, Cave versus Cave. We've got things like uh, Five Minute Marvel, give you that kind of exploration feeling in exactly five minutes. You know, you've got, uh, oh, I don't know, Meeple Circus is rather quick because you have the timer and things like that. Uh, Escape the Curse of the Forbidden Temple, whatever it's called. All these ones that kind of give you the faster version of a larger experience because of certain mechanics, things like that. What's a genre that you would like to see get that treatment? Because I have a certain genre that I love, and that would be train games, which brings us today to Train Maker. Won't you dig my train? It's all about making trains, rolling dice, and hoping that you complete the goals before anybody else does so that you can win. How does Train Maker play? Let's take a look right now, see what it's all about, and come back up and talk about what we think about it right now. Train Maker, what is it? It is a game in which you are, in fact, making trains out of dice. So it's almost a roll and write, but there's no writing. It's a roll and make train game. Your goal is to get one of two goals, actually, is to have all six of the resource types of cards from the city cards or to complete your special specific goal that you have at the beginning of the game. This one does have seven flat cards uh, on your city cards. This is three lumber or three uh, of those symbols on your city card collection so the goal is pretty simple you can win in those two ways but what do you do on your turn how do you play this game let's look right now so you start the game with two secret goal cards of which you will choose one on the beginning of your first turn so you actually don't have to choose until midway through which means if you go fourth you're not stuck with hopefully picking this card and then most of them get pulled out a little bit early so uh, just know that this is not done until it's the first turn of yours so this one would be three coal and three wood in your city cards so what you're going to do is you're going to take the dice, you're going to roll them all. Now you have to make trains, but the way to do this is you're going to have to have in your first roll a locomotive card or a locomotive dice and one of the rolling stock. The three different rolling stock types are, in fact, passenger car, flat car, and then cargo car. I don't think that's actually what they're called, but you get the point. Their points are these three colors here. You have to end your train with a caboose. So that could be a train right there. Ideally, what you're trying to do, though, is match up to the symbols here so that you can take a city card. You can only take one city card per train. So, for instance, in our rolling stock here, none of those would classify or would work. If you wanted to, you could then re-roll everything else, but you always have to build from left to right. So you'll keep your one rolling stock out there along with your train. So let's say we're trying to go for Topeka. You can re-roll everything else. When you re-roll, you do have to put one of the dice that you re-roll into this train. Now the reason this is not a problem, but also partially is, is because now you're using less and less dice. You can essentially keep re-rolling as long as you want. So essentially, you can stop rolling die whenever you choose to. Uh, you might do that based on the fact that you roll a caboose and you meet the criteria for one of the cards out here or you might actually derail and die by not being able to place uh, a die that you re-rolled up here. So let's just say you rolled three engine cards, or three engine dice. The problem then would be one of those could not place and you would derail and lose everything. If you do in fact not roll a single engine dice on your first turn, or on your first roll, you lose your turn, but if it's any consolation, you get your switch track token back. This switch track token lets you turn the face of one die to anything you want it to be. Now. Second thing to note, there is a double engine bonus. Let's just say you've rolled this, okay? You have two engines in the front of your train. That's great, extra powerful. And you also, through your rolls and re-rolls, have rolled this. Now, you can take these dice, because you have a double engine, and start rolling them again. After you claim this card, these do not refill. You only get three per person on their turn. You'll take these dice and re-roll them again in order to try and get this next card or that card over there. You can, however, combo this. You, If you do it again, you say, oh, I've got another double engine bonus. So potentially, you could get, uh, no, none of these would be available because the pure math doesn't work, but you could potentially get all three of the city cards in your turn. Once you're done, dice go to the person to the left, and the game continues until someone scores one of those two goals. That is, in fact, the game. One other important note to notice is that you can have more rolling stock in there than is actually required, and the order doesn't matter. So you could actually potentially have this right here and still claim that card, if that makes any sense. See? As long as you have the requirements. 
So that's Trainmaker. It is basically, at its core, the Disney World French fry of small games. What does that mean? Well, you go to Disney World, you have a lot of options, a lot of things to choose from. Some things are very expensive, some things are not so much, right? You're getting your Le Chillier steak, or you're gonna go and get maybe just a popcorn, right? The French fry though, not too pricey, not too cheap, right in the middle, kinda. Also, you take it, you eat it, you're never thinking, wow, these are the best fries I've ever had in my life, but you're also not like, oh, God, I wanna throw these away, right? They're just there. And that is essentially what I can say about Trainmaker. It's there, it does a thing, you roll dice, you're putting these trains together, you're re-rolling what you have left, hopefully if you roll two locomotives, and then you're gonna pass the dice and go around and around and around until somebody completes their goals. The problem with that is, it just kind of feels like you're rinsing and repeating a lot. It's made to be a quick game, but it doesn't always play quick. Sometimes these can go a long time around while people are hoping to get the very things that they need. Because when you take something off those three that are there, you might get something that is utterly useless to you on your draw, or the next person might have something utterly useless to them on their draw, so it doesn't do any good to have three cards available to you. They're meaningless, they don't help your secret goal, and they might already have the very goods that you already have. So it can actually drag out a lot longer than it may seem like up front. And that's my big knock about this game is it's just kind of there. You're not doing anything that's just majorly exciting. There's no mid-game major turns of like, oh, that's crazy, I can't believe that happened. It's more just, oh, it's my turn, I'm gonna roll. Oh, look, I got a train, I'm gonna take that card. Does this card do me any good? Well, not really, but it was my turn, so I had to do something. So that's my, my knock against this, which puts this at a solid four and a half, five, probably a five for me because it's just right there. Not bad enough to where you throw it out and go, oh, this is terrible, but not to the point where you're like, man, I cannot wait to get to Magic Kingdom so I can get some French fries, right? It just kind of is what it is. So that is Train Maker. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Dice Tower Brian. If you'd like to see the painting tutorials we're doing on Board Game Breakfast, go check out Board Game Breakfast every Monday or Thursday, depending on when it airs. Um, it'll always air on one of those two days I'm talking about my segment. And if you want to see the rest of the reviews that I do here on the Dice Tower, make sure to click the link below. There's a whole playlist of all the, the reviews done, uh, compiled in one place. But if you're going to be on the cruise, let me know. I'd love to get a game in with you. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.